Welcome, aloha, thanks so much for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we've actually got two of the leading and most experienced attorneys in mass claims, class action claims in Hawaii to talk with us about the Maui wildfire situation. We've got Ilana Waxman of the Gallagher de Robertus and Waxman firm. Ilana's actually from Maui a lot of history there. And Mark Davis, founder and senior partner at Davis Levin Livingston. And both of Ilana and Mark have done a great deal of work in victim representation, in victim relief and compensation work for large mass claims and class claims, as well as individuals. So welcome. Hey. Ilana, Mark, Ilana, you want to start us off and kind of put this in context? Tell us a little bit about Lahaina, Lahaina and what makes it unique? Yeah, so Lahaina, um, as, as many of you may know, Lahaina was the ancient uh, or the original capital of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Um, it is an incredibly historic town. Um, and the current community is also, it's a very historic plantation community. It's a multi-generational community. It's an immigrant community. Um, and it is a town that has just absolutely been devastated. The, the scope of the loss is hard to put into words. So just in a nutshell, the history, tradition, culture of Lahaina, uh, how would you characterize that? Um, you know, it, it's it's a, it's a place with very, very deep roots in the Native Hawaiian community. Um, it's a place with history in terms of um, the missionaries, in terms of the whaling days, in terms of plantations, and now tourism. Okay. <laughs> And Mark, your thoughts, I'm sure you've spent a great deal of time on Maui and with Maui clients as well. Hey. Well, I think that um, what is rather uh, unique and kind of devastating about this whole experience for Alana and I, who basically spend our careers dealing with you know individuals who have had catastrophic experiences in their lives and you know, and, and as you can imagine, uh, day by day, we hear, you know, all sorts of uh, extraordinary um, uh, stories that are, this, uh, uh, are quite uh, devastating. But in this particular case, um, you know, what's been going on the past 30 days in which, you know, our phones have been ringing uh, from morning till night, hearing one, you know, terrible story after another. Uh, you just can't help but be uh, very touched and moved by the uh, drama and the devastation that occurred there. And I think for many of us who are in this world of attempting to represent clients, um, this feels quite different. You know, this is personal. Um, you know, it's not simply an objective evaluation of, of cases. It's, uh, you know, I think we're just struck by this um, uh, kind of intangible uh, aspiration to try to do what we can for these people. Um, and uh, uh, it's been, um, uh, you know, I think a quite an emotional experience for uh, not only the people that um, suffered it, but also the, all of those, all of us who are involved in uh, trying to do something that is, you know, constructive. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So, hey, Ilana, we know that this is a pervasively damaging disaster. Housing, health care, loss of income, schools and education, transportation, literally every aspect of daily life and destruction of the records and informations, information and resources that people would need to be able to even deal with any of those losses, much less all of them. So what are we looking at here 
for relief and recovery as the highest priorities in your perspective? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's so multifaceted. Um, I would say that the, obviously the highest priority right now is people to get long-term shelter, housing, um, but also, yes, re replacing documents that have been lost, identification. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and we're having a few issues with your connection, unfortunately, but I, I'm, I'm sure other areas, loss of income, employment, um, those things. So what can attorneys do to help? Well, I think that, um, you know, there's, I mean, typically what we uh, try and do in situations like this or others is, you know, take a look at the, uh, you know, the uh, recovery of damages that, you know, tends to uh, assist in the uh, uh, recovery of losses and so on. Um, but it's not always, uh, the, uh, you know, that easy because to me, there's a multi-level of needs that are uh, required in this thing. And uh, so as Elena uh, pointed out, there are issues that are compelling issues with regard to um, shelter, and food, and clean water, and replacement of documents, and you know, identifying uh, the survivors, um, all of which kind of, you know, is the front lines of trying to, uh, uh, you know, have the first step in uh, moving towards some level of uh, recovery. Uh, and then, uh, of course, a uh, second la level is to make, is to try to figure out a way in which uh, uh, people are, uh, compensated for their losses. Um, it's not certainly an easy issue. It's not something that's totally um, uh, clear. Uh, and as you are well aware from the media that there are you know, multiple investigations going on everywhere with regard to uh, trying to answer the question, you know, why did this happen? And, um, uh, and of course, in any situation like that, there's always lots of you know, finger pointing and, uh, uh, but there's a lot of, you know, uh, energy and resources being placed into that uh, uh, investigation. And of course the issue, uh, which is perhaps uh, looming over this thing is whether ever there's gonna be adequate resources, you know, to compensate these folks in a manner that uh, is appropriate or uh, a reasonable uh, indication and of course, uh, those of us who are looking at this from uh, 30,000 feet and we're just, you know, uh, time to take a look at the broad approach. And I think to some extent the governor has voiced the same views is that, you know, there's that's going to be an extraordinary challenge. So, Elena, what are you seeing and hearing from people on Maui as their top priority concerns? Uh I mean, as you said, you know, jobs and income, but housing, housing is the number one concern. People are very afraid that they're going to lose their entire community, um, that Lahaina is going to become, you know, my apologies to the Honolulu people, but another Waikiki, that, that the sort of multi-generational Native Hawaiian working class community that has been there um, for the last couple hundred years is going to be replaced by fancy condos and luxury housing development because it is such valuable real estate and such a beautiful place. And so people really want to make sure that the community as a whole is protected and that people have the opportunity to rebuild. And there are, there are so many layers to that, but as, as Mark said, that is gonna take resources because this is a community of people who, you know, one of my friends, who works in one of the resorts out there, he, he told me after the fire, you know, that his guys that he works with, everyone was just scraping by and now they no more scrapers, they no more nothing. So it's, it's a situation where, you know, really there are a lot of needs, there are mental health needs, but there is a huge need for monetary resources. That's what's gonna let people stay and rebuild. So that's a huge priority. And that's a really important point to understand is that 
yeah, monetary relief and support and, and compensation are critical. But right now, people need a place to live. They need basic daily living need resources to be met. Um, and, and, you know, I think in terms of what we can do as lawyers, you know, there's, there's absolutely um, the entire infrastructure in Lahaina needs to be rebuilt. And that includes the legal infrastructure, even though you might not think of it that way. You know, there are insurance issues, there are land title issues, there are immigration issues, there are family law issues that are coming up in everybody's life because kind of all of the, all of the normal everyday structures that were in place are, you know, they don't work anymore because the fire came through and, and destroyed so much. And so in allowing people to rebuild all of those parts of their lives, really the law plays a very important role throughout. And, and we as lawyers have a lot of power to help people kind of walk through those different problems. And, and that's a really valuable insight, Ilana. And Ilana and Mark, so what do you think need to be important considerations and elements for the new model? that doesn't repeat the vulnerabilities and the inequities? Well, I think, um, um, I think the community of Lahaina uh, has uh, spoken loud and clear about you know, the uh, fact that they intend and want uh, to be at the table as the uh, future is mapped out for rebuilding. And I have to... Uh, you know, acknowledge that some of our politicians have been, including the president of the United States, has been, you know, receptive and uh, sensitive to that issue. Um, it's easy to kind of speak about these issues because uh, 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 words are cheap, but um, it seems like that at least the process commences on a common uh, belief that the community of Lahaina must be the masters of their own destiny in terms of how this you know property is built i mean lahaina had these unique characteristics of having you know buildings uh, uh extended you know on pylons out into the harbor uh very uh the some of the many restaurants on front street were just you know almost inches from the from the bay from the harbor and uh, all of those things, of course, um, under existing codes uh, are not supposed to be rebuilt under the same circumstances. So I think government's got to be a big player in recognizing that despite their, um, you know, concerns, setbacks of rebuilding, and, you know, uh, uh, that exist in normal situations, this is far from a normal situation. And perhaps one of the ways the county and others can, you know, contribute to this is to recognize that the character of Lahaina, you know, to be recaptured in some shadow of what it was, uh, has to get around some of these very difficult environmental uh, protections uh, that had generally served to uh, cover all development uh, in the state. So uh, that's uh, a uh, picture that needs to unfold. You know, and you make a really good point because in addition to helping individuals and groups with compensation, how can lawyers help the community have a voice in the relief, the recovery, the rebuilding? Ilana, your thoughts? Well, I think I think Mark put it very well when he talked about having the community have a, have a seat at the table. Um, I think people in Lahaina, especially in the Native Hawaiian community, but the local community generally, there is a feeling that, you know, that they've been displaced and pushed out and not listened to. Um, and I think it is very important to kind of have, you know, members of the community organizations that have so far really led the relief effort for them to continue to be represented, you know, in how Lahaina is going to be, be rebuilt. Um, and I think we as attorneys, you know, we do have, we have a voice you know, that might be louder than, than some of the other 
community members when it comes to government officials and legal processes. And I think if we are very mindful of trying to listen to the community and help make sure that community members' voices are heard and that they do have a seat at the table, I think that could be a very important role for attorneys to play. Mark, what are your thoughts? No, I, I, I think you are right. I think that, um, uh, you know, this is only going to happen in any kind of a logical or sane um, development over a period of time, if everybody kind of recognizes that, uh, you know, there has to be a give and take process among all the governmental entities. I think uh, to some extent, um, you know, the governor, uh, when he, um, uh, you know, was talking about some types of a, a claims process and, um, uh, that recognize that uh, everybody, you know, has got to kind of participate in that process. And I think it's only uh, going to be as a result of a, uh, a very unique uh, and difficult collaboration um, that, you know, and it's going to be um, uh, divisive and there will be, you know, disagreements uh, and there will be people with money who want to invest and there will be people who, you know, might have contrary viewpoints. Um, you know, it, it will be a long and difficult process. And uh, uh, Hawaii, unfortunately, has had a history of, you know, struggling with these kind of issues like Aloha Stadium and other places like that that are, you know, places for kind of logical, thoughtful redevelopment that, you know, all the various interests. So, um, you know, I think that nobody's got, and certainly not me, you know, has a magic formula that uh, uh, can, you know, put all the people in. But people need to be heard about their concerns and recognize that there are opposing viewpoints. And, um, and it's a process that, you know, hopefully some of our, you know, cultural uh, approach to aloha and other things might manifest you know, a, a result that is um, uh, actually uh, thoughtful and uh, constructive. I think in terms of, of how the, the mass torts process and claims process possibly play a role in that. Um, so the, the idea that the governor has proposed of a, a claims fund, I don't know what that will look like or how that will work. But I do think, Mark, for, for us as plaintiff attorneys and claimants attorneys, that really is also an opportunity um, where, you know, I know we represent a lot of clients who are more working class. You know, they're not, they're not necessarily the, the people who have huge views or people who, whose voices are usually heard in these development issues. But I think because they are being represented by counsel and they do have an important role in this same process, I, I think that actually becomes a good place, not to say that all of our clients will agree about what should be done, um, but it, it does it does give us a chance to represent a lot of different voices in the community. That Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think the Hawaii bar, the, our local lawyers, kind of have a unique position in this thing because uh, we are governed not only by doing the best job we can for our clients, but we also kind of recognize a, uh, a cultural and patriotic you know, uh, a duty to our community, uh, and which sometimes may conflict uh, with, uh, you know, what, what, how we typically approach some of these issues. So I think that, you know, from my own personal standpoint, uh, to me, that feels right. Uh, that's something that I endorse. And, um, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, part of what uh, we have to do as the local Hawaii bar is to you know, steer, steer this um, um, uh, hordes of lawyers that are used to doing mass tort work into the direction that best benefits not only our clients, but also the community and, uh, and, and has a recognition of the limitation of resources that will be, um, you know, uh, on the table and, you know, uh, uh, part of the issue. You know, and that's a really important insight, both of you, Ilana and Mark, that hey, we've seen the 9-11 disaster, we've seen the 
BP oil spills. We've seen the California wildfires. But in none of those have we really seen the victims relief and compensation work and funding and process connected with the community relief and recovery. And you've raised the possibility, can Hawaii's lawyers contribute to building and making that connection in this situation? The lawyers throughout the state and especially on Maui have already been an, an integral part of some of these relief efforts, fundraising, you know, making donations of tangible goods, um, and then also pro bono legal services. You know, I've spent a number of days out in the family relief centers in Kaanapali with a lot of other members of the Maui County Bar, um, giving people, you know, free legal information. There are legal hotlines that have been happening for the past few weeks, you know, statewide. Um, and yeah, I think there's, there's just a lot that is coming from the legal community. So, uh, I mean, Chuck, you, you said, can we help? And um, the answer, as Alana explained, is that we indeed can, but more so we have to. We, that's our obligation. And, uh, uh, you know, we spend our lives um, pursuing part claims against third parties. Uh, but I think that uh, there's a greater good that over, overhangs the entire analysis of the conflict that, you know, I think it's uh, something that many of us who have lived here our whole lives and, you know, uh, have practiced here for all this number of years, uh, um, you know, compels us to uh, be put as part of the calculus, you know, as we move forward. I was, uh, you know, a million years ago, I was part of the, uh, what was called the TLC, the Trial Lawyers Care Program for 9-11. And that was a claims fund that the United States government had absolutely, you know, no, probably no liability whatsoever, uh, but nonetheless compelled them to, you know, create this fund. And, uh, and there were, you know, certainly some people who believed that, um, uh, you know, they wanted to pursue the typical um, liability claims that might exist for, you know, building deficiencies um, uh, or other issues. But, you know, to me, the, the national bar came together, all 50 states. There were lawyers in Hawaii that helped represent some of the victims of plane crash and 9-11. And, um, you know, and it got done. And I know the, uh, um, uh, it's going to be a very complicated process, but something worth pursuing, I would think. You know, and you both raised a really good and important point, which is that as you know from your decades of work representing victims, victims of injury, harm, damage, loss tend to be from the more vulnerable, the more underserved sectors of the population and less able to manage their rehabilitation and resiliency without that kind of assistance. And lawyers can play an important role in that. But as you've also pointed out, that group represents a really core part of the heart of the community whose voice has far too often not been heard, given weight. And this may be an opportunity that you're pointing out for Hawaii's lawyers to try and change that model somewhat and get that voice out front and center. Does that make any sense? That, that is my goal. You know, I'm, I'm from Maui, born and raised, and I have seen, you know, a lot of people in our community have been pushed out by the high cost of living, and, and there's been a lot of loss. And Lahaina has, has been such a resilient and tight-knit community. I want to see it rebuilt in a way that lets it stay local, stay Hawaiian, stay true to Hawaii's roots. Um, and so... What I can, whatever I can do as an attorney to make that happen, that is absolutely my. And I think, I think Chuck, you make a good point that not only uh, should we review this as you know our responsibility, I think um, we need to look at it as an opportunity. Um, and uh, I think that if 
the lawyers who are involved uh, on the front lines of this these issues, uh, those of us who are talking constantly to, you know, clients that have suffered these tremendous losses. Um, uh, we need to do what we could do, but we ought to want to do uh, the same thing by virtue of the fact that this is an opportunity to kind of show what lawyers can do and what and what what we should do. And that's a great point because you're talking about making that voice, making that influence, making those values and interests a central factor in the relief and the recovery and the rebuilding. And how Hawaii lawyers have a unique role and, as you say, responsibility to do that. Are there factors in Hawaii that give that some particular elements of hope? Well, I, I mean, my own viewpoint is that, you know, Ho Hawaii has always been a very special place um, in terms of the bar. It's, uh, it's a place where people know each other, uh, you know, in terms of litigation, like big cities, we, you know, we are remarkably civilized uh, in terms of the way we uh, uh, interact with each other. Um, and, you know, the, the bar is growing. We're not always big, but, you know, these are all the factors that kind of you know, lead to a feeling that, you know, we can work together. Ilana, your perspective? Yeah, well, I think, as Mark says, Hawaii is a small and tight-knit community, and I don't think there are probably many people in the state that have not been touched by this disaster in one way or another. People have friends, people have family, people know and love Lahaina. So I think there's a lot of room for creative solutions. Yeah, and I think you've alluded to another point that you mentioned earlier. I mean, we have people in our leadership here, Chief Justice Rectumwall in the judiciary, the governor, who, as I understand, is consulting with Andy Weiner, who has a history of not only having done work for victims representation, but also former chief of staff for Senator Schatz, and somebody who may help be responsive to putting together that collaborative voice for the far too long vulnerable and underhood under her so any wrap-up thoughts jack thank you for um uh you know starting this conversation or continuing this conversation uh i think that's the heart of you know how we are able to connect with each other and you know consider uh out of the box alternatives Ilana? No, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm just very hopeful that we will be able to find a way to rebuild Lahaina and make it better. You know, and Ilana Waxman, Mark Davis, here are two of the people who, for many years, have been leaders in not only representing victims, but in enabling them to rebuild community connections and resilience. And the importance of exactly that connection is exactly what the two of you do well and have highlighted here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Think Tech Hawaii, Maui Strong. <laughs>